Okay, so I've created that map I was talking about that starts with Salomon and kind of like expands all over the place. So bear with me here. Let's start from the beginning. So we have Salomon Brothers here, and then let's look at the first row here. We have Warren Buffett. Now remember, Warren Buffett was involved with cleaning up after Salomon, led the reform of Salomon in the 1980s bond scandal. Um, also, $5 billion bailout from Warren Buffett was given to Goldman Sachs during this period of time. They were afraid that if Salomon failed, everything would fail. It was the, almost the first example of too big to fail. Um, so Alan Greenspan was the one that called upon Warren Buffett to do the cleanup of Salomon. Uh, he became the chairman at that time, and he was the uh, number one shareholder of Berkshire at that time as well. This was before his Berkshire days, but very soon before. Alan Greenspan happened to be the Fed chair during the scandal, uh, during the 08 crisis as well. He had that position. We have Robert Ginsler, who is Gary Ginsler's twin brother, who worked for Goldman Sachs um, during this time period. During this time period, Gary Ginsler was actually the former Secretary of the Treasury, so he would be right along Greenspan. And we also have Gary as the current SEC chair, the former CFTC chair, and his brother Rob Ginsler was the former Vice President of T. Rowe. Now we go to Jerome Powell, who happened to be the lead investigator during the Salomon scandal in the 1980s, who is our current Fed chair and who helped the 2011 debt crisis situation by raising the debt crisis. We have Jamie Dimon, who at this time was the co-CEO of Salomon Brothers and uh, along with David Solomon, who was a bond trader at the time. Uh, they both worked there during this time as well. You also have Tom Miglis, who made a call with Kenny Griffin which ultimately was the reasoning behind the development of Citadel's technology involving derivatives. You have Myron Scholes, who created the Black Scholes model, which is a derivatives-based model used to price derivatives. That is uh, very well known. He actually received a prestigious award for it. And that leads to derivatives. And then you have a symbiotic relationship here between C uh, Citadel Tech developed uh, derivatives technology and uh, finance technology that was led by Tom Miglis, you know, working with Kenny Griffin on that. Developed the Citadel Tech, which uses derivatives, and we all know what that led to. Then here, uh, I had to go backwards with Bloomberg to make this graph make sense, but basically Bloomberg was an in-house finance designer for Salomon at the time. Um, after he was fired in the late uh, 70s, early 80s, uh, he developed the Bloomberg Terminal in his own business. And let's move to the next tier here. So... The Goldman bailout was given by Warren Buffett. Gary Gensler happened to work at Goldman during that time. And then now we're looking into the late 90s and we get the Big Bang merger of 1988. So Louis Ranieri and Myron Scholes, I'm sorry, Louis Ranieri was also the father of mortgage-backed securities as well. So the Big Bang merger of 1998 happened. During this time, it was led by David Solomon and Jamie Dimon, the former co-CEO of Salomon and the current CEO of JP Morgan and the former bond trader, current CEO of David Salomon. You had Jamie Dimon go to JP Morgan. You had David Salomon go to Goldman Sachs. And then if we go down here from Citigroup and Travelers Group split into Smith Barney and Citigroup. And Smith Barney and UBS AG happened to be the underwriters for GameStop. Citigroup being the parent company. Now, also during this time, 2003, right after GameStop's birth, Citigroup and Morgan Stanley, to get rid of the Bar Barney name, they entered a joint venture to get away from the IPO scandals that came out right after GameStop's release. Now, if we keep going to the right here, we, we reach Michael Bloomberg, who at the time of GameStop's IPO, or slightly before it, he was running for New York mayor. Now, interestingly enough, the voting primaries were held on September 1st, 2000, and, I'm sorry, September 11th, 2001. We all know what happened that day. They had to be rescheduled due to the attacks. Now, Smith Barney also purchased World Trade Center 7 directly after or directly before the bond scandal hearing of the 1980s, late 1980s, early 90s. And of course, if we connect all the dots, UBS is now short GME, Smith Barney's the book manager, Citigroup short GME, Morgan Stanley short GME, the derivatives are definitely short GME, the Big Bang merger of 1988 leading to JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs uh, change up of leadership are both short GME. We have Jerome Powell 
I'm sorry, we have the current SEC chair working with GME via SEC probe. We have former T. Rowe vice president, also the SEC chair's twin brother, Rob Gensler. His former company is Long GME, Goldman Short, J.P. Morgan Short. And then sure enough, Warren Buffett is Ryan Cohen's inspiration, who happens to be the number one leading shareholder of GME through this revolution. And that in one picture is how you describe how this all started. And really, I should slide this further to the right and then put a little branch over here saying Bank of America <clears throat> and Salomon Brothers betting on client credit for the first time in the late 70s, creating one of the first you know derivative transactions on a mass scale that was used by many other followers that turned into all this shit. Look where it started. Look where it's all ending up. Look where it started. Look where it's all ending up. Moass, baby. <laughs>